Hey, welcome back everybody. And in this video, we're going to be looking at lab two of the MemLab CTF. The level of difficulty on this one is classified as easy. And this one's called a new world. So be sure to stick around. All right. So our challenge description for lab two says that one of the clients of our company lost access to his system due to an unknown error. He is supposedly a very popular environmental activist. As part of the investigation, he told us that his go-to applications are browsers, his password managers, etc. We hope you can dig this memory dump and find his important stuff and give it back to us. We're also told that our challenge is composed of three flags, and we are given a download link to our challenge file, which I've already downloaded. So let's head on over to the terminal and take a look at it. So you can see we have our 7-zip archive, and I've already extracted it. So we have our memory dump, lab2.raw. So let's go ahead and run volatility and get the image info on this file. All right, and based off of our last challenge, most likely this is gonna be Win7SP1X64. So I'm just gonna copy this, and we're gonna say that our profile equals this, and let's go ahead and do a PS list to see what processes were running when this memory dump took place. And I need to make this smaller. All right, so we can see, oh, key pass. So he said he used a password manager, also web browsers. There are several Chrome.exe processes. And I don't see anything else standing out at the moment. We do have a cmd.exe. So let's go ahead and take a look at CMD line and see if we get anything there. Okay, and oh, right off the bat, we see we have notepad.exe on this smartnet secrets hidden kdbx so this is probably something that we're going to want to use and you can see uh, it looks like he opened it up with key pass up here uh, there may have been some extra data that was passed in through notepad i'm not really sure so let's go ahead before we go any further with that let's take a look at our cmd scan and see if there's anything interesting in there just in case it was something on the command line and <laughs> nothing here kids so there's probably not going to be anything in consoles either, but we'll just go ahead and run it just for fun. Looks like they tried to run the uh, nothing here kids command. And yeah, nothing is not recognized as internal external command. So we're not going to get anything out of the command line, but that's okay. We do have our... We do have our hidden.kdbx. So we're going to go ahead and do a file scan and see let's dump that out to file scan txt and then we'll take a look for that hidden kdbx file all right now that's done so let's do a grep for hidden kdbx in file scan and see what we get so we get this hidden kdbx file here and this is the offset so we're going to copy the offset and let's go ahead and dump this file so i'm going to Go up in the command history and we'll say dump files dash capital D, this directory, capital Q, paste in our offset. All right, now we have our key pass database files supposedly. So let's actually see if we can go ahead and open this up. Uh, I'm going to open up key pass and let's try to open this database. We need to say all files, and this is our KDBX file. So let's open that, and we need a password. Okay, so let's abandon this for the moment, and let's see if we can figure out what the password is. Maybe there's some type of environment variable that we don't know about. So we're going to look at Ian Vars, and let's actually pipe that to less so we don't get so much output. And let's see, path, system drive, so new temp, new temp. Okay, this is strange. This is obviously not a common Windows directory, but maybe this is, I don't know, Base64 or something. So let's go ahead and see if we can echo this into Base64 and see what we get. Oh, welcome to stage one of lab two. Okay, so we have the first flag. So let's go ahead and actually copy this and we'll start a flags.txt. 
And let's paste that in there. All right, anything else in here? So you see the process name, and then there's different uh, processes, but all the environment variables are most likely going to be the same, so we can probably quit out of that. So we got the first flag. Now we need to see if we can find the password for that key pass database. Let's go ahead and look through file scan again and see what we can find. So I'm just going to run less on file scan. And we're just going to peruse through here and take a look until we find something interesting. And actually, let's let's abandon this for a moment. Uh, let's let's do hash dump and see if we can get something in there because maybe there's a user that we're looking for. And this will give us our usernames that are available on the system, or at least the user IDs. So the Alyssa Simpson user is coming up again. So let's do a grep for Alyssa Simpson on file scan. And let's see if we can find something this way. And we'll pipe that in the list because there may be a lot of information. Ooh, this may be something here, password.png, and we get the offset for that. So let's go ahead and copy that offset, and let's see if we can dump that out. All right, so we have our password.png, and let's I have known that and see if we can find out what's in there we get a looks like a document while wow, you are here but the flag is not here check out the blog below and ooh, it looks like looks like we have a password p4ss word underscore one two three this might be our key pass database so let's try this out and see if this is our password Just verify that we got that correct. It looks like we did. So, and we got it open. All right, so that was our password for our KeyPass database. So let's take a look here. It says fake. Nothing here, bro. <laughs> okay. Fake again. Not here, bro. Okay, so this is probably not going to have any of our passwords in here. So let's just look through here, see if we have any other entries. Maybe in the recycle bin. Okay, we have a flag. So if we double click this, our flag. Wow, this is the second stage. All right, so we've got flag two. And we are just cruising right along through this one. So I'm going to take a note of that. And we can get out of here. Let's close this down. We can close this. Let's invim flags. And we're just going to paste this one in here. All right, so we know we got two flags. There's one more flag that we've got to find. So what are we going to do? Well, if we recall from our challenge, it says that his go-to applications are browsers. And we remember from PS list that Chrome.exe was in there. So let's see if we can grep for, I don't know, history in file scan and see if we can dump a history file. So we do have several items here. This one here, here's our history file. So typically the browser history for Chrome is just going to be stored in a file called history. So let's actually grab this offset and we're going to do a reverse search for our dump files. And then let's copy and paste this and let's get that history file. So we can actually use a SQLite browser to open up this history file. So I'm just going to open up SQLite and let's open a database let's try opening the dot dat here we go now we get some uh now we get some actual data so let's try and browse this data and right now the table we're looking at is downloads but let's look at urls and we'll just expand this here we've got titles maybe the titles will give us some information bbcindia.com Yahoo, YouTube, Rex Nation, 
And this looks interesting. This is mega. So let's copy this and let's head over to our browser and let's actually open this up and go in here. And it looks like we've got a zip file. It says important.zip. So we should be able to download this, I would think. Yeah, let's download. Let's do a standard download. And we'll save it in Memlabs Lab 2. And we got our file. So let's head back over to our terminal. And it's called important.zip. Just to verify that it is a zip file. It says it's a zip archive. So let's see if we can unzip important.zip. Password is the SHA-1 hash of the stage three flag from lab one. Password is in lowercase. Okay, great. So we have our flag from stage three in lab one. So all we need to do is open up a Python shell or a Python interpreter, and we can actually take care of that ourselves. So in order to get the SHA-1 hash of this here, we're going to need to import hash lib and then we'll say password equals um let's see hash lib dot sha1 and we want to give it the string of our flag three from the first challenge so i'm going to open up a terminal and we'll say la Lab one, because I don't remember the name of it. We'll say flags. Okay. Cat slash flags. And this is our third stage flag. So we'll just copy this and paste it in here. And we got an error. Um, oh, I think we need to encode that in UTF-8, maybe. And print password. No, maybe we need a hex digest. Okay, that looks like it might be it. So this is a SHA-1 hash of flag three. So let's exit out of here. And let's try to unzip this file once again. Um, that's not going to prompt us for a password. So let's actually open it up in an archive manager. I'm just going to open up files. And we'll go into our directory. Open with archive manager. Extract. We'll extract it here. And this is where it wants our password. So we'll paste that in, say OK, extraction, extraction complete. Let's show the files. And there we go. There's flag three. OK, so now stage three is done. All right, so we'll make a note of that. And we will continue on with our saga into the MemLab CTF. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And uh, thank you again to all my subscribers. We just keep growing little by little. But if you would, please just continue to share this video with people that you think may be interested in this type of content. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much.